you ever felt afraid of what others would think of you when speaking English in public? Or maybe have you sometimes felt self-conscious about your accent? Have you already spent hours browsing videos that would teach you how to sound like a native? It's not uncommon that many English learners and maybe even you compare themselves with other speakers and from doing that get the idea that to be fluent you must sound like a native speaker. However, for most learners, what is actually behind this idea is the desire of speaking clearly, having people's respect and feeling like they belong, while communicating in a foreign language. If that's also true for you, you should know that none of these things has to do with how you sound. So if you watch until the end, you will learn what global English is, why you shouldn't worry about British or American English, how to live your English and speak confidently with anyone. And if you don't want to miss out on lessons just like this that will help you to understand fast speaking English, be understood by anyone and connect to the world, just hit that subscribe button and the bell down below and join our learning community. Just like Kamari who says that our channel helped him forget all of his pains and freed him from stress when learning English. Before we go over what Global English is and how it helps you gain the confidence you need to interact with people in English, let's play a quick game so that you can find out how much you know about it. Question 1. How many English speakers, native and non-natives, are there in the world? If you answered A, you are correct. Question 2. How many people worldwide speak English as their first language? If you answered B, you are correct. And question 3. How many English speakers are non-natives? The correct answer here is C. As you can see, even though nearly 20% of the world's population speak English, most of the language is spoken by non-native speakers. If you struggle to understand fast speaking natives, then I highly recommend our Real Life Native Immersion course. This 41 week course will take you on a real life adventure of the English language in a way that is fun, natural and convenient. And the best part is you can try it right now for free with our three part power learning series. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. For a language to achieve such global status, it must play a significant role and earn a special place within the communities in a variety of countries around the world. This is what happened with English, which became one of the most spoken foreign languages and the most commonly studied language in the world. But as we saw in the quiz, native speakers are the minority of English speakers. For that reason, you're much more likely to use English to interact with other non-native speakers. There's even a specific name for this. It's called English as lingua franca, which is the contact language between a group of people who do not share a common native tongue nor a common culture. So when you, native or not, interact with someone whose mother tongue is not English, you're using English as lingua franca. English as lingua franca focuses on the ability of using the language to communicate and be understood by anyone and not so much on the norms of the language. The reason for this is that in the real world, rules become much more flexible. The focus shifts to the communication of ideas, one of the most interesting aspects of having people from different backgrounds using the language for communication is that making grammar mistakes is not a big deal. 
This global use means that the English language is alive and context bound, that nobody owns it anymore. When speaking global English, there isn't just one or two models to follow like British or American English. The reason for this is because even among native speakers, there isn't only one model of English. An American, British, Australian, Canadian and others speak different varieties of the same language. This means that vocabulary, pronunciation and expressions change from one place to another. Sometimes what one native says is incomprehensible even to another native and it can create really fun situations. If you're interested in learning the contrast between American, British and Australian English, check out this lesson we've made about it. You can click up here or down in the description box below to watch it next. This is why you shouldn't worry about British or American English. It's true that for a very long time, British and American were the main spoken models of English pronunciation. One of the main reasons for this is that language is tightly connected to its users. This means that when they thrive on the international stage, their language also succeeds. So, due to the fact that Britain and later on the USA have great political and military power, English has become the language of international relations and the reason why the two variants became the most prominent models of English learning. One of the reasons why people who opt for learning, let's say, American or British English is because they will live, work or study in one of those countries and want to be more familiar with local lingo, for instance. However, people have become increasingly more mobile, both physically and electronically, and ultimately learn English to communicate and express their culture with other English speakers, whether they are natives or not. As non-native English speakers now outnumber native English speakers, there has been an increasing number of English as lingua franca users. They are fully competent speakers of English and use the language in a fluent and easily comprehensible way that does not privilege any native variety. That's the great thing about Global English. It highlights that there isn't just one way of speaking the language. The vocabulary you'll need is going to be defined in every single conversation and interaction. It makes communication much easier because we already know how to adapt the language we use to a specific situation in our mother tongue. Think about it, the language you use at home with your grandma is not the same you use when hanging out with friends, which is probably also very different from the one you use to present a project at work or school. Becoming aware of that is a key factor to start living your English and speak confidently with anyone. Having a global approach to the language doesn't mean that you don't need to learn the structure of the language, its rules and achieve a certain level of proficiency. Having a strong foundation of the language will help you become a better communicator. But you shouldn't focus so much on speaking like natives. It becomes more about the clarity and simplicity of communication, not using flowery words or faking an accent that will only make you sound unnatural. I cannot stress enough how trying to sound like a native is a trap. Although after extensive exposure and practice, you may get closer to sounding native-like, trying to pursue only that while learning the language will lead to frustration. You can't become a native speaker of an additional language. English will always be your additional language. So your accent, the way you talk, the words you choose are part of your identity, even the one you have in your first language. English is what is going to connect you with anyone in the world and speaking it is about celebrating your voice, learning about the world around you and not about sounding like X or Y. Let's look at some tips to put global English into practice. Tune your ear to different accents. The longer you have contact with different accents, the easier you'll understand them. Work on making yourself intelligible. Instead of pursuing accent reduction, understand which aspects of your accent compromise intelligibility. Don't limit yourself to listening to just natives. Expose yourself to various types of English. Watch TV, listen to podcasts from various regions and accents. Mutual understanding is a two-way street. 
If you are a native English speaker or close friends with one, remember they should also accommodate their language to the needs of the speakers in the room. Help other people learn. Tutor a friend, teach your local community. The more in touch with the language you are, the more familiar you become with its nuances. Do not apologize for speaking an additional language. If you can communicate clearly and be understood, there's no such thing as bad English. If that's the way you refer to your English and want to start speaking more confidently, then I highly recommend you check out this lesson that Ethan made by clicking up here or down in the description to watch it next. So in this video, we discuss the role of global English, the use of English as lingua franca and how it helps you communicate with others. Global English will enhance your listening skills, broaden your view of the diverse world we live in and empower you. I truly hope it helped to boost your confidence to better communicate in this foreign language. Now that you've watched it, take a moment to note down some interesting vocabulary that popped up during this video and promise me that you will celebrate speaking your English. But are they on what? sticks and things? No, they're not on sticks. I guess like uh, uh, lolly is even more general than sweets. What would you call the place where you buy this? Would it be a lolly shop? Oh. I don't even know if we have these types of stores. We, I, I don't That's think a we... good question. 